Hello students, welcome to the class. Today we are going to discuss chemical reactions and equations. Now what are these, what do you mean by this chemical reaction? Before that we are going to study physical change and chemical change. Okay. In this session we will discuss physical change, examples of physical change, chemical change and examples of chemical change. Now students, as you all must have read in your previous classes about physical change. Now what is it? When a matter changes its property but not its chemical nature is called a physical change. Now what do you mean by this property or what do you mean by matter? What is a matter? As you must have studied in your last classes, what is a matter? Matter is any substance which occupies space and volume. Right? Now we all know that this matter can change from one state to another. Right? So this change in property is called as physical change. Now when I talk about chemical nature, I am talking about its chemical composition. Fine. Now what are the physical properties? Physical properties like the its state, whether it's solid or whether it's liquid. Okay. Now wh how it results? Say if I'm taking an example of an ice. Ice is what? Ice is a solid. Okay. Now when it is melting, what will be formed as a liquid. Okay. Now there is a change in the state of water from solid to liquid. Right. Does its chemical composition change? No. It's still water which can be used. Fine. Right. Now why this happens? This happens because of the molecular rearrangement. Okay. Now we all know that substances are made up of molecules. Those molecules in solids are tightly packed. In liquids they are loosely packed. And in gases, they are far away from each other. Okay. Now, when these molecules, they rearrange, they undergo change in their state. Fine. Now, in solids, the intermolecular forces of attraction is very, very high. Now, what do you mean by this intermolecular forces of attraction? It is the force of attraction between molecules in the matter. Right? So, this physical change is due to molecular rearrangement. Now, another point is that can we recover the original substance from it? Say, if water has changed from liquid to solid, that is ice, or liquid to gas, that is vapor, can I get water back? My answer would be yes, I will get my water back. So that is a physical change. So in short what we can say is in a physical change the property of matter changes but its chemical nature doesn't change. It results due to molecular rearrangement and the original substance can be recovered from it. Now, as I have told you students, the example of physical change, that is melting of ice. We have just now discussed. Take another example, that is crushing a can. Okay, you must have uh, used cans of beverages or water. What you do is, you just drink and then crush it and throw away. Now, does this crushing mean that the composition of the can has been changed? Of what can is made? If I talk of bisleri bottles, it is made up of plastic. Now, after crushing, does its, comp does its composition change? No. So, it would be a physical change. Got my point? Now, take another example that is crumpling of a sheet of paper. Fine. Now I have got a sheet of paper, if I have crumpled it or if I have torn it, what has happened? 
the physical property of that paper has been changed that is from a paper of a4 size you have got what you have got a crushed paper or you have got small pieces of paper fine does its chemical nature change no what is there you have the paper intact with you okay its chemical nature is not changing that's my point now let's take another example that is casting silver in a mold what is silver the chemical name of silver is argentum or ag now the silver metal is used for making ornaments for making utensils now children if i am molding the silver what am i doing am i am i changing its chemical composition no what is being done is it's just molded that is melted and kept in a mold so that you are getting beautiful ornaments or utensils out of it so this is also an example of chemical change let's take few more examples of chemical change that is water freezing we have already discussed that if i am freezing water what am i getting is ice the chemical nature of ice is not changed okay take another example that is erosion what is erosion or what do you mean by erosion erosion is what there is the flow of soil with Uh, during the rainy season it is the flow of soil so does the composition of soil change no the composition of soil remains the same so it is again a physical change okay take another example that is condensation now students what is that what is what do you mean by condensation it is that during evaporation what happens that water is boiled and water forms water vapor now if you cover the bowl with a lid what will happen vapors will collide with the lid they lose their energy and they condense back to form water so what is condensation it is also an example of physical change getting my point now there another example is tearing of paper we have already discussed let's take few more examples of physical change the first of your is dissolving dissolving means adding one substance into a liquid adding right if i am adding sugar into water or i am dissolving sugar into water what is happening sugar is being dissolved and you are getting a sugar solution does the composition of sugar change no sugar is sucrose only right so the composition of sugar is not changing but the physical state of sugar is changing from solid to liquid so or uh, if you dissolve your uh, juices in water does the composition of juice change no the composition of juice remains the same right Now let's take another example that is cutting a tree down. So students, what are we doing is we are just cutting our tree. We are not changing the chemical nature of tree, right? So this is also a physical change. Our another example is withering of rocks. What do you mean by withering? that is rocks are churned down or broken into very small pieces right now does it mean that the chemical nature of rock has been changed 
no the chemical nature of rock remains the same so it is again a physical change take another example that is breaking a bottle again we have discussed it in a crushing of cans again here yeah, if you break a bottle what is going to happen there is no change in composition only the sh shape changes right so this is all about your physical change now let's discuss another type of change that is a chemical change now students as the name indicates chemical means what its chemical composition is being changed okay so a chemical change can be defined as when the original substance is changed into one or more different substances with different properties means that is the chemical nature of that substance has been changed see for example i am setting curd out of milk what is being done there in milk there is a sugar called as lactose now when i am setting its curd what is happening that lactose is changed into lactic acid so the composition of milk here is changing now can we get milk back out of curd will make can we get no it's not possible to get curd out of a uh, milk out of curd again fine so it's a chemical change it takes place on the molecular level what does this mean that the molecules the bonds between the molecules are broken and the new bonds are formed fine so this is your chemical change here i have shown you a picture of an egg right now if you split egg in a container if you break an egg in a container what happens the shape of the egg changes it spills all over the container but if you are cooking an egg what is happening the albumin part settles down right and the yolk that is also changed so cooking of egg will be a chemical change so what i am telling you is that while making an omelet or a poach or boiling what are you doing is you are changing the chemical nature of egg now in egg what all are there there is albumin that is protein right in the yolk also there are proteins now if i am heating it or i am raising the temperature what is happening to the protein proteins get denatured got my point now what do you mean by denaturing of proteins that is you know children there is every protein has got a specific structure specific geometry there are specific bonds present there in proteins now when i am supplying heat to it right what is happening these bonds will cleave and they form new bonds right in your in the case of egg what is happening is that albumin gets denatured all the bonds are cleaved and it solidifies so this is a chemical change getting my point now in the next slide we'll discuss the example of chemical change what i am seeing here is it is burning of a candle now this burning of a candle is an example of a chemical change now how how it is changing chemically the students what is happening here is the students what is happening here is candle has got wax molecule now what is wax wax is a 
fatty acid or it is a lipid molecule okay now this wax molecule is having carbon hydrogen and oxygen specifically arranged okay now when i am burning what is happening this wax molecule is cleaved into carbon dioxide and water right now what has happened here this is a chemical change got my point short in, in simply we can say that the wax molecule has been broken down into simpler molecules like carbon dioxide and water okay so let's see few more examples of chemical change that is the first of it is your combustion now students what do you mean by combustion okay combustion can be said as if you are burning anything in oxygen or in the presence of air is called as what combustion got that point say if i am burning a log of wood right what is happening it is being burnt and what you get get at the end is the charcoal okay now i'll tell you here that the log of wood say it has got some organic compound organic compound for example there is methane got my point now if this methane is burnt in oxygen okay now oxygen or air what it will form is it will form carbon dioxide and what it will form children carbon dioxide and water now what is happening here here there is a chemical change that is a complete compound has been spliced into two simpler molecules that is carbon dioxide and water so it is a chemical change now our next example is mixing of chemicals if i am mixing two chemicals let's take uh if i am mixing sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide which is a base right now what is sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is a base if i am mixing it with hydrochloric acid what i get what am i getting children i will get sodium chloride okay now what is the sodium chloride you must be using common salt or which is a sodium chloride and water now what has been done here just tell me what has happened here here there was sodium hydroxide it's another it's a compound and it is mixed with hydrochloric acid and what is hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid is hcl now after mixing what am i getting is sodium chloride and h2o got my point so here again what is happening a chemical change fine let's take another example that is rotting of fruit you must have seen if you keep banana for long or if you keep citrus fruits for long time what happens that the taste of the fruit changes and you get that pungent smell okay then you can't eat it now just tell me what has happened there what has happened to the fruit does it shape change yeah does it 
property changes. Now, what property am I talking about? I am talking about its chemical properties. Does it change? Say, take an example of a citrus fruit that is, say, orange. If I have kept orange for three days in my kitchen shelf, right? What will happen after three days? It will start smelling bad, and it will be so bad that you'll not even taste it. What has happened there? Now this citrus fruit has got what? Citric acid. So this citric acid has been acted upon by the microorganisms present in your kitchen. And of course the weather. Right? So due to the activity of microorganisms, there is certain change in the composition of citric acid. There is evolution of some gas. That is why it is smelling bad. Okay? So rotting of every fruit is a chemical change. And of course students, what is present in each and every fruit? It is sugar. In any form. It may be fructose or it may be sucrose. That particular sugar is used by a microorganism like bacteria. Right? And they give out certain bad smelling products or gases. So what is rotting of fruit? It is a chemical change. Let's take another example. Cooking. Fine. Your mother cooks delicious food. Do you know what type of change it is? The chemical composition of again a particular food has been changed. Now you can't eat a raw potato. But you can eat french fries. And since all of us like french fries. Why? Because again the composition of that potato has been changed. You have added lots of fat in it. Or you have added salt. So this changes the composition of potato. You can't eat raw lady finger. But once it's cooked, you'll definitely like it. Right? So cooking changes the chemical composition. Now just tell me, can you eat rice raw? No. But when it's cooked or when it's boiled, all of us like it very much. You can't eat lentils raw. It has to be boiled. So what happens students, that by boiling it or by cooking a substance, its chemical composition changes altogether. And so that is a chemical change, right? Now, our next example is photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? You all must have read this. What is it? This is the method by which plants make their food. Now, what is the food for plants? It is again a sugar. It is glucose, it is fructose, right? How they are making it? What are they using? They are using atmospheric carbon dioxide and water. Right? Now this carbon dioxide and water is combined. Right? Now this carbon dioxide and water combines and what are we getting is let's see what we get. Carbon dioxide that is carbon dioxide plus water. Now what is the energy which we are providing it? The, it is get, taking the energy of sunlight. Right? So sunlight energy it is taking. Now students, where is photosynthesis performed in a plant. It is in the leaves. Now what are the pigments present in the leaves? Just tell me what are the pigments present? That is chlorophyll. Now where is this chlorophyll present? Chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast. So what can we say that photosynthesis takes place in chloroplast? Right? 
Now what we will get here? We are getting, or the plant is getting, sorry, plant is getting a sugar. Now this sugar, it is using for what? It is using for its, tell me, tell me, what is it? Metabolism, right? So, what is the plant doing is, it is using atmospheric carbon dioxide and water and energy from sunlight and it carries out the photosynthesis in its chloroplast and what it forms is sugar and oxygen. That's why what we say is that plants release oxygen. Okay, so what is photosynthesis? Is it a chemical change or a physical change? It is a chemical change. Now I hope you must be through with the physical and chemical changes. To elaborate it more, I'll take few more examples. Right? Like explosion of fireworks. You must be enjoying exploding um, crackers in Diwali time or when India wins match. Everybody enjoys that. What type of change it is? It is again a chemical change. Got my point? There is another example here that is tarnishing of silver. You must have seen silver ornaments or silver utensils. They turn black when exposed to, when they are kept exposed to air. Why is it so? Just think about it. Why is it so? It is because of the deposition of a layer of silver oxide over it. So what type of change it is? It is a chemical change. Okay. Now our next example is lightening a match. Everybody uses match boxes. Okay. Now why this match stick lightens? What type of change it is? It is a chemical change. Why? Because the chemical present on the match stick tip gets oxidized or gets changed. Another example is chewing or digestion. So this is also a chemical change. Our next example is rusting nail. Rusting nail, what do you mean by a rusting nail? If you keep iron object exposed to air or moisture, what happens? A reddish brown substance deposits over it. Now what type of change it is? It is a chemical change. Right? So students, now I hope that you must be through with the physical and the chemical change and its examples. Now search about these changes in your surroundings. The more you'll find things, the more the concept will be clear to you. Okay? Now, for this session, so students, we are going to meet in our next session and there we are going to discuss few more examples of chemical change and of course why the chemical change occurs. The chemical change is due to the chemical reactions taking place. So what we are going to do is, we will discuss about chemical reactions and chemical equations. Okay, till then, goodbye.